on my laptop, I have a folder on the desktop with something that Plato said 2,000 plus years ago, 2,300 years ago, I think, that he was opposed to, to writing. You know that Socrates didn't write anything. He just spoke on dialogues. And this, the legend says that Plato was his student and he was able to write about the dialogues because people cultivated these uh, very, very deep memorization skills with a lot of memorization techniques. And before <clears throat> paper was ava available, you know, they use uh, papyr made from, from, I don't know the name in English of the, of the plant. Papyrus? That, papyrus, okay. So that grows, in, you know, on the rivers of the Nile, on the, on the sides of the, river, of the Nile River. Um, there was, you know, diff there was difficulty in, in finding materials to write. So people just had to memorize. And there were uh, travelers that went from town to town and they repeated stories. That's how people got to know what was happening in the village uh, two hours down the road and what happened in the capital six hours, you know, far away because these people had great memorization skills. So I like that writing of Plato so much because basically he's saying that Oh, I don't like writing. I don't like this technology because we are going to lose the capacity of memorize as we did in the past. And I, I love it because he was right. He was right. We cannot memorize anything. We just forget what we wrote, read in our phone 10 minutes ago. But we created many other ways of replacing that wonderful memory that those travelers had. Mm. It took years, you know, um, well, not two years, you know, the, the libraries were invented. Um, Alexander the Great went to Egypt and invented, created the first library of the world where people had these rolls of papyrus, you know, with the information. And it became a way of controlling a, a, a community to burn the books. Let's burn the books because we are burning their history, their knowledge. And then, um, I don't know how many years, but in 1500 in, the, in Europe, Gothenburg invented the printing press. And it was possible then to copy the Bible which until then was copied only in monasteries with a lot of care. And as soon as the printing press was invented, uh, the Bible, you know, is the, the book that has been printed the most throughout history, was accessible to everybody. And then a few years later, a few years, like a hundred years later, Martin Luther came and said that, Salvation was personal, and therefore everybody has to learn to read the Bible. And so people have to have Bibles, and people have to read. So it's like one advance, one technological advance brings the other one, and the other one, and the other one. And that's how I feel about AI. We are going to, we are going to invent something. We are going to invent something where our society will be richer technologically because we have incorporated AI. And for that, we need this technology of wisdom cultivation. I call it the technology of wisening, to be wiser. If I'm here, I want to be here in terms of wisdom. I want to be able to understand my mind. So they in, in marketing, and that's where I was going to go with imaginal psychology. Imaginal psychology is used all the time in marketing. The way every time we see a commercial, every time a politician talks to us, everything has been designed to seduce us, to seduce the mind. So we have to learn to incorporate those tools in our day-to-day -day lives so we can educate our kids, protect our families, etc. So democratizing wisdom is not a I think it's a it's a mandatory thing to do, like we do with writing and reading. 
uh, despite Plato, um, we have managed to do wonderful things, teaching everybody to write and read. So I think everybody should learn to wise it themselves. Because all of us, as you said, have this little piece of Solomon, King Solomon on, the, on them. <laughs>